<laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome once again to Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Postolka. And with me today, I have that guy right over there, Andrew Cross. Andrew, glad to have you today. <laughs> it's backwards, isn't it? It's like I was going to point at I'm, you. And it, yeah. I'm yeah. with stupid. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it, isn't it? <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's about it. Well, today we got an interesting topic because we're going to be talking about how interest rates affect business value. We're going to cover that a bit. We're going to cover some of the some of the changes it's really made in the business sale, uh, the sale, the selling of businesses, and and some of the things we're seeing in the market and the economy because of it. So, Andrew, let's get started. Yeah. So. When you started out selling businesses a few years ago, this was not in such a good time. And you you had some similar situations to, to what we're starting to experience now. So talk about that, because then I think that'll roll us good into what we're seeing with such a dramatic for the last decade or so rise in interest rates. Yeah. Yeah. I got into um, the m and business in 2009. Um, and spent the first year um, getting my knowledge, um, um, which is good because I didn't know what I didn't know. And uh, uh, and a lot of people were getting out of the M&A business um, at that time. As you know, that was the big financial crisis. Um, and it was, um, you know, uh, it was a, a, a disaster. Um, I think, you know, in retrospect, it, it turned out to, and I didn't do it on purpose, turned out to be a good time to get into the business. But um, at that time, there was no real any um, bank lending. Um, everything had frozen up, the bank failures and all that kind of stuff. So um, deals really slowed up. Private equity was still fairly active and wanting to be active. But, um, you know, even by private equity groups and investors, they still leverage businesses and use use um, uh, business loans. Um, so, you know, at that time, um, in order to get in any deals done, um, and the activity sort of went down to smaller deals. And, and I, um, and if you were going into smaller businesses where, you know, you have more flexibility, um, aids, they're not as quite as expensive. You can also do, you know, you can, you can, you're free to do more, um, uh, uh, creative, uh, financing strategies, you know, seller financing and earnouts and, and these kind of things that, that help. But uh, at, at that time, too, a lot of the medium sized or larger businesses just bunkered in and just wanted to wait it out, not going to sell. And so that was activity was way down. So looking ahead to today, you know, I mean, not, and since then, we've had 10 years of cheap, um, ca- you know, cheap uh, capital. And, 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 you know, it's, interest rates have been at zero. Um, you know, um, the government's been flooding money into the market during COVID crises and, and stuff like that. And you know, um, for the most part, you know, that it's unprecedented that we've buyers have had that kind of access to capital for the last almost 10 years. Um, yeah. And so it's been, you know, um, a seller's market. You know, it's like, you know, you, there's a lot of dry powder out there from the uh, equity groups. They had access to cheap capital and, uh, you know, um, and they were they couldn't even spend what they had. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um and then what the net result was um, higher multiples. Yeah. And, you know, and here we are today now, um, very, very quickly, that, that whole table is completely flipped. And yeah. we definitely are seeing the effect. Um, deals, yeah. Deal flow has gone down. Yes. A yes. Lot. It's a, yeah, it has. It really has in the first the first half of the year. I, I haven't looked at the latest statistics, but I know that every, every article I've read, they say it's down, it's down, it's down. And and it's getting more buyers are getting much more selective, mm-hmm. um, and and some of the other things we'll discuss in a minute that and valuation has has been uh, affected. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that, and then also terms terms of the deal and how how they're structuring the terms of deals has been affected. Mm-hmm. So when when the interest is increased. You know, the government's doing this to try to slow down the economy. What are what are some of the things that that business owners really need to be thinking about if they're considering the sale of the business in a time of interest rate increase? 
I mean, what what are the things that they're going to have to come to the realization or think about mm -hmm. when they're doing that in terms of value, in terms of what they should be doing to prepare? So give me a couple general things and then we'll go into some more specific. Well, I think that, you know, um, in, in, in business owners need to understand the capital market uh, and the cost of capital. Um, and, you know, this is um, that that's gone way up. Um, you know, so, um, it, it, you know, they're going to feel that, too, because, you know, in being able to finance their business uh, cost of materials is going up, cost of labor is going up, you know, so that we are under inflationary pressures. Um, you know, uh, it does seem that businesses are still chugging along. And I think, you know, they're um, obviously they're going to have to they're going to be participating in the inflation with increased costs. Um, and, and so sales will will probably increase in that effect, whether margins do or not. You know, it's, uh, you, you know, we have to be seen, but it's definitely they've got headwinds that they're facing. But the cost of capital uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, they just have to understand. Um, we just make some assumptions when you're doing valuations. You make assumptions that uh, the way it, the, the business will be valued based on a, a market price. The market price is driven by, um, you know, generally a buyer, you know, will do an asset sale. Um, and, you know, it's not always the case, but. You know, you can make a pretty good assumptions and, and valuators do that, that it's going to be an asset sale and the, uh, the buyer is going to come in and leverage um, the business cash flow to, to buy the business in, with the cheapest amount of capital they can. And the cheapest capital, of course, is friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then some people do that. And again, that's where it's, it's that flexibility you get on a smaller deal. And, um, and the next cheapest form of capital is, um, you know, government backed loans, SBA loans. Um, which have now gotten increasingly more expensive and then um, and then cost of capital beyond that um, you're going up into um, venture capital equity groups investors you know who have you expect fairly high rates of return on their their mm -hmm. investments in there so um and they they also leverage um with the bank so they are they're they're they don't have the access that they used to although and these are investors looking for our alternative returns so and then an equity group, you know, you know, we'll have investors who put money into that and they can they can access that cash. But, you know, they are going to want to see higher returns because then mm -hmm. now today they can go take that same amount of money that they're investing in these small, medium businesses and private equity and put it in just into T-bills and make 7 percent. That's the mm -hmm. safest thing you can do, um, you know, so. Um, you know, it's, there's options. Yeah, you're going to have, have other work. options. Yeah, they definitely have other options. And um, so, you know, they're because um, that's all they are, are investors. That's a, that's a good point, because that one of the things that I didn't think about until you said that was really that the rising interest rates make other options outside of investing in businesses more attractive because a lot of money was going into the purchase of businesses or real estate simply because low interest rates uh, and in, and those things, the, the values of those appreciating so fast because of the low interest rates was driving a lot of investment into businesses and real estate. Yep, absolutely. Ah. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's definite it, 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 at the end of the day to get a deal that it will have an effect on purchase price. Yeah, and prices are going to have to come down um, because the cost of buying a business has gone up. Yeah, and, and I guess you know, as a business owner, that's you know um, what they need to recognize that um, in order to kind of get the you know what the return they want uh, on their investment, they may have to um, they may have to work on in internal organic growth and, and mechanisms to to get past that because multiples are dropping. Yeah, that's true. Because if you just look at last year, and I don't quote me on the numbers because I, I did this a while ago, but what, weren't the interest rates like this time last year, a year ago, like a half a percent or something like that? And now I don't even know what it is. Five percent. Five percent. Yeah, it's five percent. Well, for for example, like um, uh, a, a typical SBA loan now um, is running about nine and a half to ten percent. Okay. And it was, and for the last nine years or seven years, it's been around five and six. Yeah. 
So five and, to six. So, so what does that mean, you know, to, yeah. to the seller? Um, you know, and you, it, it's it, it, just look at it from uh, the bank's perspective. Okay. I want to buy this business. The bank's going to underwrite it. They're going to look at, you're going to look at your cash flow, you know, mm -hmm. and if you had, you know, a um, billion dollars in uh, cash flow. Okay. Um, that, that's, uh, that's, you're not going to get as much for that um, as you did in the past because that cash flow has to pay that debt service. So, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's pretty good math to figure out, you know, um, a typical loan is 10 years, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, amateurized, you know, 80% down, uh, or you're going to finance 80%, getting probably 20% cash down. That's a very typical asset sale deal that mm -hmm. the banks will finance. And so, you know, if you, you take your purchase price and you can figure out what your annual, you know, expense, your principal plus interest payments are going to be. You know, you have to have enough cash flow to cover that. Yeah. And yeah. That's so, you know, um, uh, in order to get that coverage, you know, one and a half times coverage is, you know, what a bank, a typical bank's going to want to see. You got to have enough cash flow to cover that. And that's so it's a, it's a lot. It's a pretty high hurdle to get over now when it's at 10%. Yeah, when I I wasn't quite this high when I, I did a rough calculation, I don't know, two, three months ago. Um, and it was something like it went from on per million dollars of business price. And I was kind of going, okay, on using one and a half uh, debt service coverage ratio, how much cash flow do I need to support $1 million in business value? And mm -hmm. it's just rough as heck, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it went it, like from last year, one year ago to then, it was 22% difference, I think. Mm -hmm. So if each million was, if I remember right, it was like 180,000 and now it's like 215, 220,000 mm -hmm. that, it, that it needs uh, to support $1 million in value. So, I mean, this is significant for, for, for business owners that were expecting that their business was going to sell in a time of low interest because they just dropped the price of their business by that much. Right. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, if that, it, that's what the market will bear. Right. Yeah. And the cost of capital has an effect on that. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's, it's where buyers, you know, uh, sellers really need to understand just um, that, you know, it isn't, I'm going to sell you this car <laughs> and we can put some arbitrary value on it. You know, it really comes down to it, you know, step back and, 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 uh, and look at the amount of cash flow the buyer will have available to support a, the lending. And, and they have to, you know, they got to have enough left at the end of the day to pay themselves and, 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 and uh, and pay down their, their, their loan you know, so that they're building equity, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, which is yeah. typically, you know, it should be at least three to five years. You should have and, that supported building that equity, but if you don't have enough to do it, you just. Yeah. And, and sense. one of the things I was just thinking too, and, and help me with this. So if I'm looking at this and I know when they're figuring loans, they look at how much growth capital you need as well. Mm -hmm. And if you need a bit of growth capital to do this too, the increase in interest rates have hurt you there too, because it's, it's going to take you, you know, it's going to cost you more interest on all the growth that you need to fund. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's, um, you know, working capital um, that is going to be required after, uh, the transaction, the, you know, and, and the working capital you need to have on hand to run the business, you know, that will go, you know, that'll take, that'll, you know, that, that's not, that hasn't changed, but yeah. you're, you're, you're correct. You're going to have to provide that the business, the seller will have to provide that to the, the buyer enough working capital kept in the business. So, and that means current assets, you know, anything you can turn to cash in the next, you know, 90 days. Yeah. To keep the business running. Um, but, you know, sellers miss that, you know, oh, I'm going to get a million for my business, just for example. Oh, but, you know, um, the equity in the business is the cash you have in it, too, and the receivables and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, the, the selling price might be a million bucks, but, um, well, the buyer's not going to buy your cash, uh, but they are going to want working capital in there. And it could be $200,000, you know, on a million dollar transaction. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, 
it makes a difference. So it, it makes a difference, and you know, and really, at the end of the day, it's cash um, that yeah. you know you're leaving in the business uh, as working capital. So you can say maybe I'm not getting a million; I'm getting eight hundred thousand. It's really about what you your net after all these things are done. Of course, that's that's a good. that's a good money. That's a good money. That's a good uh, point because that money. If you're optimizing your working capital and driving that down prior to the sale, that actually helps you net more out when you go to sell the business. So if you can reduce your inventory levels and still be growing and running the business the same way, if you can reduce your AR and and uh, increase your AP a little bit to to really reduce the total amount of capital in the business, that will help you net mm -hmm. more for the, from the sale. Mm -hmm. And it will reduce the buyers, um, just their, their, I guess, risk because mm -hmm. they would have to fund more working capital in the future. Not necessarily the initial part that you have to, but as they grow, the working capital is more expensive per dollar they've got to put into it. So Yeah, that's correct. You know, huh. and... Um, again, with, you know, going to smaller deals, you know, this is this is one of the areas where a seller can have some flexibility. A bank is is going to probably require the seller to provide working capital, but also because they're conservative, they're going to require the um, the buyer to have a line of credit, um, mm -hmm. which is, again, which is going to be quite a bit, at least a revolving line of credit to because they want to be over covered as far as working capital goes. And, and those revolving lines are pretty expensive now too. So, yeah. So it's yeah. hurt their revolving line costs too. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you're doing, if you do a sale without a bank, you know, you don't, you can, you can negotiate the working capital and that kind of stuff. And, you know, and in that, it, like you said, and prepare for that transition, whereas you don't have to, that that's that flexibility. And if you, you know, I think the biggest difference is now day, now today, and this has really happened in the last six, seven months. If you want to sell your business, you, you're you going to have to look at these kind of um, uh, working around the bank, doing more of your own seller financing, creating your own, you know, providing capital um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, just not only to get a little bit more money, but also to get the deal done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the, the one of the things that that really, as you were bringing this up earlier, was the um, interest the interest costs are cutting, you know, are actually reducing future returns for investment owners. So do how much is that hurting? I mean, because I know uh, sophisticated investment buyers, they're looking at future earnings because they can, oh, they've got to grow the value of the business. And, and, you know, that's how they make their total return, right? I'm going to buy it right today, but that growth and getting it out there and, and increasing that value like you want is really where they're there. They make sometimes the lion's share of their money. So do you think that this is pressuring business sellers to have a higher growth rate during this time just to, to, I mean, get deals done because the the private equity people or people that are sophisticated investment buyers, they're getting more picky about deals just because if inflation or the interest rates are continuing to go up, it's going to just cut their returns back even further. Yeah, well, I think that that probably depends. I mean, and, and also, you know, in this climate too, you know, high, high growth um, can be expensive. You, know, so you got to fund, yeah, that's true. Well, you know, so you're going to get more working capital and, and there are, you know, all buyers are different, you know, so there's some, they're cons more conservative funds that really just want good steady returns. Um, mm -hmm. They're not really interested in, 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 in high growth companies. And there are others that are looking for high growth companies because they have vehicles to a uh, financing to be able to support that growth yeah, and get returns, but it's not always the core of their strategy to have a company that's growing. Um, but you know, um, it's, it's really all about the EBITDA, the margin, you know, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you've got to, you know, you've got to, um, show that it's repeatable, you trans, you can transition it and that you have been historically been meeting those margin margins, um, you know, and can continue to do that into the future. That's, I think that's going to be the most, um, 
uh, that that's going to be the most sought after businesses right now too. There's yeah, I video, so that's a good point because I was I was just writing a note as you said that is I I I would think that if a business is able to maintain or increase their margins as a percent of revenue in in the same time now that we're seeing increases in um, interest rates, that has to be a big benefit for them. Yeah. You know, of course it depends on the business too. And you just want to, you know, you, you, the buyers are pretty savvy out there. They know what the competitors are doing. They want to see, you know, are you, you, are you above average, you know, on your margins or below? That's and true. Can you, you know, and can you navigate through um, these headwinds in the economy can you raise your prices and still keep your sales level up? Can you, you know, keep, can you still keep delivering those margins and pay your, you know, increase and you know, keep your, your management team, your, your people in place because you're going to be paying them more and everything. So, um, and, and the buyers though are going to be looking for, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, one thing too. It really depends on what industry you're in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's they're true. Be because for, They're going to be looking for um, some investments that, are uh, uh, you know probably there's going to be more looking for safe harbors? Yeah, well, you think about that, and you go things like manufacturing, where we play a fair amount. Mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing that's capital intensive, like you know, sophisticated aerospace machining or something like that, where you're dumping a million plus dollars into each machine that you bring in. That kind of stuff that has to really hamper the sale of those businesses. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, and it's expensive. Those are, there's high barriers to get in those types of businesses, but yeah, you know, yeah. But, uh, you know, mm. investors may be looking for boring businesses, insurance yes. services, um, yeah. healthcare, healthcare, you know, we don't see, you know, um, I think there's a fair bit of activity in there as well, but okay. Yeah. So what are you thinking we're going to see six months out from now do you think we're going to i mean what should what should people that are contemplating the sale of their business be really preparing themselves for um you know i you know there there is it this isn't um it's not really a recession um there is a pullback but there is still a big appetite to purchase businesses um but the right kind of businesses so i think you know basically adjust your expectations, know what you're going to, you know, and look ahead to see what you can get, get a, get evaluation done, um, you know, from a, you know, somebody like that. So you know where you're at um, and then you can set up a way to target, you know, kind of where you want to exit. It's not going to be as much as you think, but mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's, that's one of the big things in the sale of businesses is timing. Yeah. You know, timing is yeah. everything. And, you know, it's not you, you, you. The one thing you really aren't in control of is to say, I would like to sell my business when I'm 60. Yeah. You, you're doing that. It's because you have no idea what it's going to be like then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sell it, you know, when, when you get a, you get a good return on your investment. And if that means now or late sooner than later, then fine. I've got one question because I was thinking about this as as we had some conversations today with with some business owners. Um, so if I have, I mean, we're talking about creative deal financing, right? We really have to figure out some creative ways to finance deals. Have you seen it before where where someone would say, "I've got a manufacturing business and I've got equipment, and I've got equipment loans"? Have you ever seen it? where if my equipment loans today, if, if I got my equipment two years ago and mm -hmm. I got a five-year loan on my equipment, yep. I got it at a good interest rate, right? Yep. Have you seen it where rather than pay that, that loan off that the, 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 they somehow transfer that I don't, you know, not yeah. Yeah. do yeah. that. That's a really good question. Um, and, you know, because there may be some equity. <laughs> in, yeah. In but I think, you know, um, commercial leases and those kind of things. Um, yeah, it is. It's just like in your home. People aren't selling right now because they, they're they sitting on, you know, they got a 2% interest rate. And 
which yeah. is strictly now eight or nine. So um, they're not selling. Whether it's you know those are not transferable. Whether they are depends on the contract. Um, yeah, yeah. If, if it is, um, you know, All um, right. if it is, there's you know that, that'd be something. You know, you you bring a good point. You may have something of value there. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking because if you if you have machines with excess capacity or something, and and I've got commercial leases with those. Is it good for some owners to retain ownership of machines and lease them back at the rate that they could to the um, to the uh, new buyer because my lease costs are lower for the new yeah, buyer? It's probably a that's yeah that that would be a good way to look at that. You know, in a, in a similar way, um, similar fashion that that's how leases are dealt with too. So I mean, if you you know, if if you're a real estate lease, if you're sitting on you know a very good competitive rate and you've had it and you've got an option for another five years or something, there's could be value to that. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, landlords are pretty savvy and yeah, usually their contracts are written if there's a change in control. Um, yeah, yeah, um, you know, but you know, no, it's something worth looking at. Equipment, though. I mean, if you if you got a lot of equipment and and. Uh, Yep. You are you're locked in with a good rate. It might be something that's well worth it yep. to figure out a way to reduce interest costs for you and the buyer. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. It just came up as we were talking about it here. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a, it's taking a lot more thought into getting deals done when the financing costs are higher, isn't it? Exactly right. Yeah. 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 So what what exciting things? Do you think the interest rates that caused in the business sales? Good things. Good things. Exciting um, things. Things that go, holy heck, this is awesome. I think um, uh, it's exciting to be in the finance business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, yeah, and, you know, those those services are, are are still doing pretty well. I'm I'm quite surprised um, how, you know, uh, how resilient uh, the market is being, um, if it, they're buying healthy damn, but, you know, paying, they're, they're overcoming or paying the interest rates anyways, deals are getting done. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think generally, I think, especially in the small, medium businesses that, uh, you know, I think the, um, I think the economy is pretty good, you know, for yeah. that, you know, certainly the demand there and, um, uh, you know, um, but you know, it is definitely more technical and, and difficult to navigate around an exit. If if you're coming to that point, um, you know, uh, it it's uh, you know, it, my experience was from 2009 was that business owners bunkered in and, mm -hmm. and waited it out, and that wasn't really uh, that what you know uh, that a lot of them ended up, you know, just, they just lost equity in the business and, and they got the, you know, they went through a decline too, you know, it's generally yeah. that's how it goes. And yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, so I, you know, I think bunkering in and waiting, um, you know, it might work, but you know, you could still, at the end of the day, you may have much less of a business to sell by the time yeah. you get on the other side and you, you'll be a few years older too. Yeah. Well, the, the one thing that I'm wondering is, is, is the increase in interest rates weeding out a lot of the businesses that were probably getting considered before, but can't be considered now? Mm -hmm. So do you think the best businesses have, have more competition to buy them? Yeah, I think there'll, there'll be some cleansing, you know, yeah. there'll be, uh, you know, throughout. And, and I think that's across industries, not even to more specific. Yeah. I think like the, um, the, uh, Probably in the, the most you can see it right is in the um, hospitality restaurant uh, service industry. It's uh, there was a lot. I mean, COVID. You know, they kept a lot of people around, but the interest rates are flushing out a lot of them and a lot of closures. And then, and, you know, those kind of industries. That's what they do. They'll pop back up, and then you know, and how do they pop back up? People are putting capital into it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's interesting times for sure. But, uh, you know, I think the target in that too is in, in, in one of the biggest expenses that any business has is the real estate. Um, and, and real estate prices have been, you know, you, if you have a business that's, you know, got is paying uh, 20 or 30 percent of their revenue towards their rent, you know, and that's what was going on. And it's because yeah. rent, rent, you know, real estate's high. It's not, you know, yeah. the, business, the business generate what it generates, but. 
you know, no business should be spending, you know, that much of their revenue towards their rent. So there's an adjustment there and that'll be good. And there's opportunities that come up. Yeah. Um, and that real, that market does need to adjust. Yeah. Yeah. Because as, as you know, you looked at some businesses in the last 12 months that were paying far above, you know, as a percentage, it was normal and for the area, for the type of, of space that they have, but it was significantly higher than what they should as a percent of revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, based on historical yeah yeah, yeah. you know so well, i mean really as far as that goes the the business the the um you know the business is actually um paying for the landlord's investment yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. this isn't making anything uh, yeah and that's that's that that's in the small businesses that's pretty common but yeah well, if you're the owner of the business and the real estate, that's that's not such a bad thing. But when you're leasing the but land from somebody yeah, else, but it'll be interesting. I mean, there's office vacancies and you know that kind of stuff and remote work, and there's a lot of pressures. And I think that I think in the long run, not good for real estate people, but better for um, the overall economy and, and businesses. Um, yeah, more affordable real estate. So it seems like from our discussion today, one of the things, though, that business, anyone considering a sale of business should really do is um, a probably want to if you've got a valuation last year, you need to get that thing updated at least because it's going to change. <laughs> and, and the second thing is, is, is that um, if you're not growing at least a bit. You might want to look at that and see if you can change that a little bit because that will help the buyer get more comfort in um, mm -hmm. overcoming any future interest rate. Yeah, and, and, and I'll, I'll definitely caveat that with growth, but profitable growth. Profitable growth. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you got to yeah. maintain your margins. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There you go. That's probably the biggest things. Maintain your margins with some growth and, mm -hmm. and you're probably going to be in the best situation. Yeah. Well, Andrew, it's... it's it was great talking about this because this has been on on the minds of many people in the the industry of selling businesses for sure. It's if yeah. uh, people listening didn't understand if if they saw all the blog posts and everything that are happening about it, they would uh, realize that this is changing a lot of things for business owners that want to exit. It is, um, and I, and I I do think you know it's a, it's a correction, and I I did think, yes. I don't think we're going to be going back to those zero interest days. So it's really, and that was an adjustment back in two thousand nine that people had to realize. And before that um, crash, you know everybody was into doing deals and wheeling dealing, and they thought it would never end. Um, it, it, it's just we're really just getting back to baseline. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's so there's still value. There's still transactions going on. There's still a market, and buyers want to buy. Um, it, or we're getting back more into like the real, um, you know, or, you know what transactions should be for. Um, That's a good point. That's a good point because valuations were high because money was so cheap, and and people were tempted to buy less quality businesses because valuations were cheap, and they could stick you know money into it and. Yeah. And maybe do some fixer upper kind of things where now they're going to be looking at it and going, mm, we don't want to spend that extra money if we, you know, mm -hmm. we're not going to go down that road. Yeah. These are, I mean, I think uh, the auto industry is having a similar trouble. They got new cars that are sitting out there because people can't, yeah. you know, they're, they need to, they need to bring their prices down, their costs. So, but that's, we'll see how it goes. Say it's yeah. a little different than with a business. Yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by today, Andrew. And I know people can people can get a hold of you at the Exit Your Way website and talk to you there and or, or you. It's Andrew at exityourway.com if they got questions about this. But yeah. thanks for stopping by and talking fun. today. You bet. Talk okay. to you later, everyone. And everyone today, thanks for listening. Thanks for always uh, getting in here, putting comments in and doing that doing that and helping support us. And if you got someone that you think you'd like to have on the faces of business, have them reach out to me. Thanks, everyone. Bye.